It was so nice and warm yesterday. I'll bet you were out at the beach. I doubt that you were at home watching basketball. You're right on two accounts. I was at the beach. I was not at home watching basketball, but I did take the little TV to the beach <laughs> with me. And uh, some other people out at the beach had a TV, and we sat out there on the sand, and we watched the Lakers and the Celtics. Hmm. It's a great, idea. a great series. First, I agree. It's stupid to play basketball in June, but it was worth watching yesterday. Game six of the NBA playoff series, Lakers against the Celtics, and Boston had a chance to win the championship yesterday, but they blew it. Los Angeles 119, Celtics 108. Let's go to the forum. Now, here in the first quarter, Lakers in gold. James Worthy takes it to Larry Bird, and the war is on. Then Bird comes back, first with the fake, then the running one-hander, a spectacular spectacular day for Larry Bird. Now the game was expected to be physical and it was. Dennis Johnson to Maxwell. He is pushed by James Worthy. Retaliation for game five. That's the way the series has been. Later Magic Johnson on the drive with the basket and the foul. But the Celtics controlled the first half. Watch Gerald Henderson with the steal. Henderson had 22 points for Boston. The Celtics led by four at halftime and stretched it to 11 points in the third quarter. Bird to Robert to Johnson to Robert Parrish for two more. But that's when the Lakers put in Byron Scott. He produced the comeback, setting up the steal, and then Kareem ahead to Byron Scott for two. The Lakers down 87-83 after three, but the Lakers surge back in the final quarter. Byron Scott knocks the ball away. Magic to Byron Scott for the beautiful reverse. The Celtics go cold. Jabbar got hot. What a comeback for Jabbar and the boys as the Lakers beat Boston in game six, 119-108. Spectacular comeback in Los Angeles. So it comes down to one more game, game seven, winner take all tomorrow night at the Boston Garden. Meanwhile, in Fort Worth, Texas last night, Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker from right here in Norfolk won the 132-pound title at the U.S. Boxing Trial. Sweet P. just flew into the Norfolk airport, and we kidnapped him. <laughs> here he is live with us. Congratulations, Sweet P. Thank you very much. Okay, you're the world champion. You're the Olympic trials champion. You made it look easy down there in Texas. Was it as easy as you made it look? No, it wasn't easy. The first two fights were very easy for me because uh, I got a quick knockout the first fight. And uh, the second fight I made very easy. I fought Anthony Haskins 6-3, and I had to get on top of him. So I spent a lot of energy in the second fight. And uh, that's last three, night. That, that's three fights in, in what, a week or so? Yeah, that's three fights in less than a week. So last night, so you last, go into the final match. Right, and uh, I had a, a lot of energy left, but I didn't just didn't have as much as I had the first two fights. And uh, when we got in there, we just banged and mixed it up, and uh, I came out the winner. Okay, you win the Olympic trials, but still, one more fight to go. They call it a box-off. Now you're going to fight two weeks from now or three weeks from now in Las Vegas. They call it your next worthy opponent. That's the fellow you fought last night. Why do you have to fight him again? Well, they, like the Olympic Committee say, they don't want, they want the 12 best fighters. And uh, they don't want to have no flute guy, no guy that doesn't have any international experience on the team. So they, uh, they made up a box off. And, uh, but everybody on the team is, you know, is number one in their class. So I don't think that a uh, box off means very much. It's just going there and and be shocked. You expect to win your box off and, and you expect to represent the United States in the Olympics. And win the gold. Okay, going for the gold. <laughs> now that the communist countries are not in the Olympics, who's going to be your next toughest competitor? Even though I know you're the world champion, you've already beaten the Soviets and the Cubans. Well, uh, I think uh, the next two of the toughest probably would be Korea because they have a nice, you know, a, not, a good little 132 pound. So uh, overall, I don't think I should have any problems with or without the communist country. Okay. Sweet Pete Whitaker going to get the goal in Los Angeles. I got one question. You got to promise us when you win that gold medal, you're going to bring it back here, wear it around your neck right here on, on the news with us. And talk to you. Okay, baby. I appreciate it. <laughs> we'll kidnap him again if we have to. Sweet Pete Whitaker, thanks for being with us. Thank All you. right. One more story. Speaking of Olympic sports, a Chinese high jumper broke his own world record in the high jump yesterday, leaping 7 feet 10 inches at a major track meet in West Germany. Let's go to West Germany. This is Zhu Zhanhu of China. 
behind of the current world champion high jumper. He said the previous record last September, and here he breaks it again. A spectacular jump two inches away from eight feet, and you have to wonder how long will it take him to break eight feet, a new world record in the high jump, and we'll be back with more news right after this.